I've been uh, involved with testing for over nine years now, um, but majorly I've been working with Microsoft Stack for the past seven years. So I don't get a, I don't get to work in a lot of um, open source projects. So um, as a part of POC uh, for finding a better or uh, a much stable or much suited to our needs performance testing framework, I came across Locust. And just to give you a little context of things, currently we how what we do in my team is uh, we use a lot of JMeter. Anyone uses JMeter here? Any problems with JMeter? Any problems you can think of? Perfect tool. Great. What about how how much load can you put from a single instance of JMeter? Any any any? Uh, so. I currently work in Autodesk and I work as a part of the identity team. We have uh, a huge, a very huge amount of requests per second that we need to uh, actually cater to. And for that we need, and for that basically we have to run a lot of users concurrently uh, to actually simulate the similar loads using JMeter. What we were noticing is uh, even in a distributed setup in JMeter, we were running into bottlenecks, and for that we wanted something that can have a little, that is little less resource in intensive. So what I, I see, I've not used JMeter. You can tell a, a lot. You can tell me I'm wrong. I've come from, as I said, I've come from a Microsoft background. I have used a lot of Visual Studio performance testing suite. So yes, uh, that's pretty good, to be honest. But yes, um, it carries a half, he very hefty price. Um, what I've noticed is in JMeter uh, is basically one user utilizes the whole of one thread till it's disposed. So unless you have a very strong machine, you cannot have a lot of threads and hence you cannot have a lot of users running on those threads. Um, I was searching for this and basically or on these lines and I googled and it came across something called uh, Locust. So Locust is an open open source tool. It's been it's made it's licensed to MIT. People in MIT made it, and they had quite a similar experience using J, uh, JMeter. So I thought, why not give it a try? So uh, here is my experience using J, uh, this Locust. Let's see how it is. Uh, so first of all, why Locust? So basically, it's quite lightweight. It can be actually uh, run in a distributed manner quite easily though I did not have to try this I ran it on a complete POC capacity only uh, so it's basically intended to use uh, uh, to test load test uh, websites and how, why it's called locust is if you know what locust means it's basically they swarm a, a website as to imitate that logic so that's why it's called locust so uh, it's completely Python based. Uh, it's you can it's open source. You can hack hack into it. Uh, you can add your own methods into it. Can you can you see? Can you, hopefully, okay. Uh, it's open source, and uh, you can add your own logic to it. Add on to the source code. Do whatever you want with it. That's the beauty of it. Uh, it runs on something called Gwent. Uh, Gwent. Uh, that's basically in turns runs on something called Greenlets. Uh, I didn't have much knowledge on it. I did a bit of reading on it and found out that they are basically subtasks. So what, how it manages resources it, uh, one thread is, uh, is divided into multiple sub threads and that one single thread quickly context switches between threads and that's how it can manage a multiple users in that one single thread. That's how it's basically more uh, resource it's not very resource hungry, nutshell. <clears throat> uh, and that's pretty much it, the features boring part. I'll get to the example, just to show you how, what I mean. So, uh, one second, let me just start. Anyone well versed in Python here? Anyone in well versed in Python knows ins and outs of Python? 
Yeah, don't ask me any questions. Okay, this is how a, uh, a regular locus file looks like. Um, so if you go down at the bottom, you see something called website user locust and uh, basically something called a locust has been passed into it. Uh, this, this, this class over here defines the behavior of locust. You want me to zoom? Sure. Okay, one second. Better. So uh, this class over here, uh, the last one defines the behavior of the locust. So you can imagine that this spawning one insect and this says how that insect would behave. So in the sense that that insect would hit this URL, it would spawn after five seconds and within the period of five to nine seconds. So how locust uh, behaves it? it wants to keep the timing random so it picks up a time between the minimum and maximum and in that uh, minimum maximum it takes a random time and spawns the user the, the reason they explain why they do it is to key, keep the behavior as user like as possible so uh, after you spawn the locust what do you want it to do this is all defined in these these classes that basically take in something called a task set so these task set are instructions to your insect they say uh, how what exactly it should do this defines that so you want it to call a post on your side get or do anything you want this is, is where you define it so uh, when you actually install Locust or when you actually install packages uh, for Locust, you get uh, it comes installed with something called an HTTP client and uh, that basically uh, gives us the facility to call or make calls over the internet or basically make all the verb calls. So uh, just as an example, I have uh, two locusts set up here. One is actually running off of uh, uh, an API that I wrote for something else that I can actually show you what it does. So what I've done is I've written a couple of bunch of APIs and they're running locally. I can actually hit those and show you what happens. The other thing is uh, I have another locus which is set up to hit Google because I'm pretty sure they wouldn't go down with like a thousand users maybe. Can you see the screen? I don't know if I can enlarge this. Can you see this properly? The command and everything? Uh, so the command for starting up a locust file is you say locust minus f to signify that what file you want to start or start hitting and then you specify the file name so this is basically for me it's userload.py and under this if you had multiple locusts planned then you can hit any locust you have to specify which exact locust you want to hit so as I said I have two locusts specified in my file one is hitting Google, one is hitting my local APIs. So this is this one is actually for my local API. And if you start it, it automatically goes to port 89. And if you hit that locally, this is the screen that automatically gets loaded. Now you have two options here. You have to specify the number of users it has to imitate and the hatch time. So hatch time is nothing but after a certain amount of time. If you want a, a ramp up of sorts, this is how it simulates the ramp up. 
So let's start easy. So it's basically, if you see, uh, it started, it spawned one thread and one user to be honest and basically it's hitting a, a certain task that was specified to it which was a post on my local API so it's basically going to keep on doing it till you stop it uh, the other way is when you start Lucas you can specify a time and after which it will automatically stop uh, if there are any exceptions or failures they are captured here like this one Second, let me enlarge it a bit. So basically, what it was expecting is, if I get a user, if I search for a user, I should be getting it back, and that should have a status code of 200. But I, I, there was something went wrong in that. So it couldn't find that user, or there was some other error, so it got 400 back. So this is the kind of errors or failures it, 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 it basically gets here. So you can see all the failures here. It has already failed six times on post itself. And uh, this was certain amount of errors that happened. Uh, if you want to see charts of how, how it happens, this is a total request. And uh, the response times, and it measures everything. So you can collect this data in this graph automatically. You can use this information but it's only available to you till your locus server is running as soon as you shut down your locus server this all goes away so what you can actually do is you can download this data for later now uh, i'll stop this because as i said it's running all locally i don't want to tax my system too much but uh, just to show you just to show you what i mean by it's resource efficient uh, we're going to hit google So same file, different locust, sorry. If you see the host from localhost, it will change to actual point to Google. Now we can say maybe 1000. So uh, just to make, I, I got confused a bit when it all started. So when I say I want a thousand users, what it's intelligently does is it doesn't really spawn thousand concurrent users. Why does it? it? It spawns thousand locus, but doesn't use them all at the same time. Uh, what you have to keep in mind here is this counter RPS over here. It basically says that how many requests per second it's actually trying to make. So we said we want 10, 10 users per second up to 1,000 users. So it's going to ramp up till 1,000 users. And basically, this is how it looks like. So if you see on the resource side of things, it's uh, even with this, it's taking about 500 megs of uh, memory and about 9.4% of processor usage. And it's making about 103, or uh, now increasing, about that request per second to Google. You can ramp up as much as you want. Uh, I'll discuss as a limitation. I'll discuss it later when we're done with the demo. But uh, this is how it basically looks like in a nutshell. Let's keep it running for some time. So there are no failures. The chart looks like this. There's a request per second climbing up. And this is a response time. It was, there was a spike in the start, and then it stabilized. This, is, this defines the number of users. So basically, you see the number of users have stopped increasing now.
So with a thousand users, it's making about 140, 140.2 requests per second. I'm gonna stop it. Okay. So uh, drawbacks. Since, uh, it, as I explained before, it works on something called Gwent. That's not really optimized for Windows. So if you're running this on Windows servers, uh, you will hit a very strange bottleneck wherein all your calls after a certain amount of users will start failing. So uh, uh, for me, this was for about 2,700 users. So when I had more than 2,700 users try to go beyond 2,700 users, that's, that was a limit for me in my Windows system. If, however, you use this on a Linux-based system, that's much more efficient. You would be able to hit much higher loads on a, from a single machine. Uh, not to mention this, as I said, is distributed. You can run it in a master-slave configuration anytime. So that's even more efficient. Uh, it, uh, I mean, coming from JMeter, wherein you can actually click and add elements and everything, is, is a little bit, this has little limited hand holding. So you have to lo write your own logic and everything else. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much how it is. And that's it, very short. Any questions? Let's give it then. So I think you mentioned it briefly, um, maybe you can talk a little bit more about how can you scale this? Can you run multiple locus agents on different nodes? Do you want to produce more loads? Have you tried this? Uh, no, I haven't. So, so I didn't try a distributed setup because I said this was purely in a, uh, a POC capacity. Uh, but I've uh, gone through videos and uh, people's testaments wherein, and I've read through documentation wherein you can have multiple nodes set up quite easily. They, can be, they only recommend one master, but you can have multiple slaves. And if so, the way they, they, they set it up is the master would be running on one node. The, 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 the test code has to be copied across all the slaves, but the slaves know about the master. So basically when the tests run, the master just dictates work to the slaves, whichever slave is free, it manages it automatically and runs it. So and you have a single uh, dashboard? Uh, yeah, yeah, you get the, you have, you just have to read the master's dashboard. That's it. Okay. Cool. Uh, so when I had used JMeter, mm -hmm. I had uh, come across some plugins. JMeter has this plugin ecosystem, right? So one of the plugins that I frequently used was uh, server analytics. Okay. So what we are doing right now is basically creating load from the client. Sure, yes. But we do not know the uh, resources being utilized and the load that is actually getting generated on the server when we are creating the load from the client. So does Locust have something like that where you can come to know what is happening on the server side? Excellent question. I was going to say one of the drawbacks of this later, but okay, anyways. Uh, frankly, I did not look into this, uh, to be honest, but I'm pretty sure Python has some free library that lets you do that. Uh, I probably think how it would go down is they have an agent that needs to be set up on the server side that, that taps into Perfmon and, and gives out the results for them. But as I said, I haven't really looked into that. No, sorry. But yeah, um, so. We don't use this uh, with RJ meter uh, just because we are very finicky about what we deploy on our servers. Uh, so in most of our anything above our development environment, we don't even have access to it. So we had to go through, jump through hoops to go through it. Um, in the past, when I had used VSO or Visual Studio, it automat if you are using Windows servers, it automatically can tap into Perfmon. So yes, that's. Um, Correlating your number of users versus memory and, proce and processor usage is amazing on a one single graph. How currently we circumvent it is we have something called New Relic running on our, uh, on our servers. 
we put the load on it and we get all the uh, processor and memory data from New Relic. Okay, thanks. Uh, earlier you mentioned that you are investigating locus because you are not happy with the performance of JMeter. So I'm actually curious, what is the max load you can get from JMeter from your existing configuration? Uh, uh, roughly about, uh, as far as I remember, uh, if we are using the UI, it's about 200, 250. If we stop using the user UI, just use the console part of it, I think it can stretch to about 500 users. Uh, beyond which we have to use a distributed system, which we actually went for later. I see. I guess you all didn't change the default setting, right? Because default setting comes with a very low JVM memory setting. I think we all did that. Uh, I, I didn't wasn't involved in it, uh, so I think we they all did that. They tested multiple things and then they decided they want to move everything they had uh, to something called Blaze Meter. I don't know if you know about it or not. Uh, the thing with Blaze Meter is uh, you don't have to set up anything. They have their own setup. You, all you have to give them is your test, and you can run it from multiple locations. So I'm sorry. So uh, that was the max load I have seen. There might be more, but yeah, don't know. Hi, uh, usually my company is a star. Uh, we have not really going to any performance as, as yet. But we are just evaluating looking at different tools and framework. Sure. So we are just about to uh, choose JMeter to go there. So after uh, attending your talk, uh, so two things to consider here. Do you have prior knowledge of how? So, yeah, exactly. So, so Locust Locust basically offers you flexibility over what you can do with it, how you can run it, how you can mod it. On, uh, and takes away basically all the easiness of you know creating test in JMeter. So if you are well versed and you have people who can actually do it, then you can easily run Locus. I, I would probably recommend it. Can it be run on Mac? Mac? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's much more suited yeah, to run on Mac. Uh, it's yeah, that's the only prerequisite I can think of. Yes. Uh, the uh, one thing you have to be careful on running on Mac and everything, usually they come with uh, a max limit of open file headers, uh, which is set to a very low limit. So if you're especially making calls over HTTP, what it does is it every single call opens up a new file header. So if that limit is low, you would see that after that limit is reached, you, your test would automatically start failing. But that's a very small thing. It's just a configuration change that needs to be made on the machine. Yeah, yeah. This is, as I said, this is much. The underlying libraries are much more optimized for Linux. So this, anything, you, anything Linux based, this was much, will work much better. Hello, and uh, thanks for your presentation. Oh, nice. And I have a question. Uh, do you know is there any library to integrate WebDriver with Locus? Uh, because actually, uh, <coughs> when working with the Zenith, for example, we can integrate, uh, we can use plugin uh, to run WebDriver because you know that the uh, browser used by uh, performance test tool, uh, test tool normally it is just simulate the real browser. So we don't have the accurate uh, response time for best rendering. That's why somehow we need to integrate with the uh, web driver so we have a great uh, response time. So I don't know if uh, there is any library that we can integrate in Web driver has Python specific libraries. So you can just import web driver, to be honest. And uh, if that doesn't work for you, there are many frameworks like robot framework which have uh, which have uh, web driver incorporated within them. But WebDriver itself has a library as far as I know on Python. Uh, 
uh, no, uh, what I mean is that, uh, of course, uh, <coughs> the web driver library uh, already exists, but in order to make it work with locals, it should have some library like uh, with, uh, like in Jupyter, uh, the plugin for web driver to run with the Jupyter. Oh, I, I see, I see what, you, uh, okay, I, sorry, sorry, I understand what you mean now. Um, uh, so basically, what I felt is, um, I'm not 100% on this. When what you specify in a task can be completely up to you. It doesn't stop you from saying that don't run, you know, don't call a web URL or don't instantiate a browser. It doesn't stop you. In a task, you can do whatever it want, whatever you want. Just that some of the matrices which are like client or the response times might not be recorded. So in that method, it's like a normal Python method. You can call whatever you want. So if you already have libraries of, uh, you know, uh, web tests written, you can just call them directly. So that's the access, uh, that's the flexibility part I was talking about. You can basically do what Python allows you to do. That's it then. <laughs> cool. Thank you guys.